The Beef and Barnsey Show, brought to you by BowlersMart.com, trusted by bowlers around the world since 2004. By Lightning Strikes Bowl, home of Bowlers Mart Pro Shop. By Platinum Ford, drive the difference. By Fire Lake Bowling Center, 24 state-of-the-art lanes. By True Grit Coatings, drive on our passion. By Road to Grip, king of them all. By 900 Global, striking worldwide. Good morning and welcome back to the Beef and Barnsey Show. After a two-week hiatus and uh, a little bit of bowling, not much of it all that good by us, but some fantastic matches and uh, a lot of TV in between the last couple of times. As usual, I am Barzi, and I'm joined by the unimitable Stuart Williams. How are you this morning? Uh, yeah, not bad. I'm kind of pissed off with Texas weather, but not bad. The uh, the rainstorms, it 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 was torrential rain three different occasions yesterday in between bright sunshine so that's kind of bullshit uh <laughs> it means that the grass grows like it's in uh some sort of laboratory um because you have 8 hours of sunshine and 2 hours of rain every day laboratory so, yeah. <laughs> oh boy uh yeah, no, you could tell. I went and bowled the regional last weekend, and uh, and we finished, and the weather was 80, 85 degrees the whole time. Uh, got eliminated from the tournament. And you're like, all right, I got a few weeks break. Maybe it's time to knock the dust off the golf clubs. Walked outside, pouring rain. I'm like, why? Why does it have to be like that? Yeah, why? 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 And, and then somebody works. says... Man yeah. from the UK, mad about rain. Uh, well, yeah. Why do you think I'm here? <laughs> and, and this has been going for a minute. But yeah, we got to get the chalkboard back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of little bits of uh, cleanup to do. Um, Says, uh, my pro shop average to drill up a gem for me this weekend. What layout do you think a one handed righty? Uh, 14 on the screen. So, whoa, that's pretty slow. Um, 16 and a half after hand. 330. 330 eh, probably close to being matched. Uh, tends to carry down a lot. Well, if it tends to carry down a lot, I'm not sure the gem is the one, but um, 60. But I, I think that's a pretty good layout. Yeah. I think that's a pretty option. That, 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 that's a pretty standard uh not too strong certainly not weak should allow the gem to retain most of its energy so yeah and then um one other question somebody was asking um what's your preferred pin down layout for a symmetrical ball uh a symmetrical well a ruby is a little different because that flares way less about half of of what uh the uh, Zen idols uh, phases, but uh, uh, for that, somewhere about a half inch to an inch stronger than your your favorite pin up layout, probably a half inch stronger anyway. Uh, so if you like five inch pins, then four and a half inch. Uh, so what? So what have you got in your ruby? I have a few of them. Uh, the first one I drilled, the one that was in the test, was a gosh. Let's see. Go back. Was it down? It's down. It was under my ring finger, which puts it right at four inches for me. Uh, okay. I think that's pretty good for them. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, lots of people saying good morning. Uh, yes, the U.S. rain is a little different to the U.K. rain. It's usually a little warmer in Texas. <laughs> um, good morning, Adam. Hope you've had your ball drilled. No doubt you have. Uh, what's going on, Pat? Uh, I have left the surface on the out of the box because it hooks way more than anticipated, even shiny. So I have not done taken any more off of it. So anyway, we have our latest major champion. Uh, he did it in a fairly grand fashion. He went through. Uh, Murderer's Row, so to speak, 
to get there and uh, basically intimidated all of them so much that they uh, they were afraid to even uh, look him eye to eye. It was uh, it was an impressive uh, impressive run, a impressive season. He is now eighth on the points uh, this year, which is uh, quite an accomplishment. Please welcome to the show, Kevin McCune. How are What's you, up, everybody? Good. How about you guys? Uh, not as good as you. No, no, <laughs> certainly, certainly less profitable. You've, you've you've come a long way since Wichita when you had to move my balls to the next pair. Hey, that's fair. I that's, <laughs> that's fair. Still appreciate that one at Wichita. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, <laughs> so, um, wow. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let let let's delve into it a little bit. Um, I I do feel like we should just quickly run back to the World Series because one of the funniest things that happened at the World Series, me and you were bowling next to each other on Shark, and you were throwing it fairly similarly to how you were throwing it on the short pattern. Uh, this on the TV this weekend, 20, 20 odd miles an hour, pretty straight. Everybody else was in and hooking it, but you bowled really well. And I bowled like an asshole the first block. So I said, well, I mean, Kevin's pretty good, but I mean, I feel like he's not 300 pins a, a block better than I am. So I'll try that. So we started this bit of fun back and forth, me and you, every time we got a lucky break, we just say speed kills. Right. Yes. And of course, we've got speed the king kills. of speed at the back, Eugene. So I'm, I'm, I'm tapping up your dad every time. Hey, what should I do now? And he's helping me. And then he starts to realize that I'm actually bowling quite well. And then he's starting to become a bit more reluctant to help me. And I'm like, come <laughs> on, Eugene. So anyway, we get to about game three, and um, you have another good break. And you were down on the end pair, if you remember. You walk back. And uh, you say, good things happen when you throw it hard. Yes. To which Eugene responds, well, why do you throw it slow every week, moron? <laughs> he did say that. He Parenting did. 101 by Eugene. <laughs> that was his response. And it was very quick, too. He didn't think about it. <laughs> nope. So why do you throw it slow every week, moron? And you just looked at him and like... There's this thing called oil down the lane. I don't think they had it when you bowled. And then you went back to like, whatever. So it made me smirk because you were on the TV throwing absolute missiles on both hands. And I was like, good things happen when you throw it hard. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, congratulations, Eugene. Uh, you know, yeah. Is it, so I guess that pretty much puts puts your dad third in the uh, in the family tree. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I always give him a hard time that I was going to beat him a lot sooner than he did. It only took me about two hundred less shows to make TV, but different format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was I was a little disappointed that we didn't get a my week when you won. Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> my <laughs> week. Dad, my dad thought it was his week anyways. I mean, he was getting interviews. He was signing autographs. He was having a great time. Oh, shit. It, he, got more, he got more interviews by being your son than he did by being a bowler. There's so, a good chance. Yeah. There's <laughs> a good chance. Uh, I got to, you know, I spent some time bowling with your dad. Your dad actually is one of the more versatile guys on tour. Uh, he could throw it as hard and straight as anyone on tour. Actually, set the scoring record at one point, lofting it over the right gutter cap. Uh, well, maybe not the gutter cap, but the gutter. And then, uh, uh, you know, he was first or arrow or sixth arrow a lot. Uh, the tour pretty much beat him out of playing the the, the middle of the lane, uh, even though he could play pretty much anywhere he needed to play. Uh, we always we always used to laugh about that. Eugene, the king of everything but where everybody plays <laughs> still is second through fifth arrow is where 99 percent of the bba titles are won eugene's a notch right of five and left of 30 <laughs> <laughs> he, he can make a curve 
I grew up with some guys that uh, one of my college roommates said it was a little behind your your uh, your dad, and so um, they talked about him in a uh, uh, very reverent tones uh, of how how good he was and how many different things he could do and and, and that. And so uh, uh, we have a we had one question here. There's uh, something about uh, an incredible jersey, the story behind the jersey you wore. Oh, which one? I had. I had the Paynes Valley one on Saturday, which was Tiger's Hole 19. That's just an extra hole that he had at his course, just because me and my brother are planning on playing it sometime soon. And then I had the Wrigley Field one that I wore yesterday. Man, there you go. I mean, I hope it isn't another 115 years till you win another title. I hope so, too. <laughs> You'll throw it slower. That's true. <laughs> um, uh, I heard from Big Mike, Sweet the Rife got a hundred off beef. He did. He did. He did. His boy had to come through for him one time. He, I, I, I just messed the bets up. The first time we bet, Mike ended up getting a beef and Barnsley shirt out of it. The second time, he got a he got a hundred and he he lost and won. So I don't really know how that's worked out well for me. <laughs> um, hey Glenn, thanks for the super chat. He says, "What workout regimes do you use to get your ball speed? Have you ever broken thirty miles an hour?" Um, well, I played baseball for my whole life, and I've kind of just used baseball and catching. And I mean, I don't do a ton of workout because I'm constantly busy. I just, I just eat quite a bit, <laughs> but it's all in the legs. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's in the DNA as well. Yeah, it's just kind of. I just make sure to use my legs well. I mean, I think they showed on the show that I absolutely destroy my shoes because of how hard I drive my right foot into the into my slide. Um, I'm just trying to really get into my legs and have them help me throw the ball hard without trying to throw it hard. And, yes, the fastest one I've ever thrown, I think, was 34. 34. Yeah, I mean, I, like I say, you, you, you definitely get it down there. Um it's, uh, I think that you and Eugene throw it the hardest I've ever seen for strike shots. Um, you're, you, you, you might be able to get as hard as Osku on the one shot, but nobody can throw it as consistently hard as Osku did when he was younger. Oh, like, no. Osku literally no. never threw a shot or a spare under 30. It was a joke. No. Yeah, I don't got yeah. that one. Yeah, that was, that was 32. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, his uh, his his changeup is like twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's it it is it is amazing. And like when you're throwing it that much harder, do you like what what part of the, are you really playing? Like the early part of the lane, like really trying to uh, you kind of just using the speed to keep it on line, um, or you know what are the moves? Yeah, um, I'm mainly looking at like the first 30 feet of the lane, trying to get the ball to read early and set, so that way I can use the speed to create hold and not really have to worry about throwing the ball to the right. I'd rather create hold by using the speed because I can be more consistent at doing that than trying to be slower because my hand will change more. Yeah. Obviously, I'm still learning all the tricks of the trade, but at the moment, that helps me be more consistent with what my hand's doing and how I'm going through the shots. Yeah, it's it's like your um like your comfort zone, so to speak. Yeah. So our viewers, how old are you? Twenty-four. So on the first match, uh you be um Zach, um, and to some extent against EJ, you were throwing it a lot harder on the uh on the long pattern. What brought back the change to, you know, dial it back to only 19 miles an hour? Uh, kind of where they were playing on the lane. So I was trying to be more on top of them to make the lanes break down more. Right. So that way there was a little bit more early hook and a little bit more transition to where they were playing. I mean, the only match I didn't throw your thing on the right lane was against EJ because I didn't want to give him hold anywhere because obviously when EJ sees hold, he's going to strike all day. So I kind of – game plan depending on who I was bowling and what I wanted the lane to do. Yeah, I, I felt like I didn't really know. I, I noticed a really big change on the long pattern was really more where I saw it. 
Yeah. Um, and then in, in, in relation to when you're throwing it a little harder, I, I know my thoughts on it, but like how big a progression do you have to have in your balls to really notice a difference when you're throwing it like 21, 22 miles an hour? Um, depending on how long it is, pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Like the one innovator that I was throwing that I used the majority of the time on the left lane was a five and a half inch pin. And the brutal collision that I was using, like through the advancers rounds and stuff was a three inch pin down brutal collision. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, and, completely. But, th but that's the thing. Like once the more ball speed you use, the less that you're going to change ball a little bit. Yeah. So like, for example, like when I, when, when I'm throwing it like pretty hard like that, like I, the world series, I, I went from like a reality with a five, five inch pin to a absolute with almost a six inch pin. Yeah. Because it's only that first part of the lane. You're literally worried about like maybe this much of the lane that's less than 20 feet away from you. Yeah. So I think for the people at home, it's like, when you're doing that, it's got to be like a huge change, right? Like yeah. when you want to get out of a ball. So yeah. All right. Well, let's yeah. let's uh, a couple of people are asking questions here about were you nervous? How did you how did you control your emotions? Um, I honestly wasn't really that nervous because for high school I played on TV for baseball in front of uh, the whole town of Jasper. <laughs> I mean, their whole town came to watch their team. So there was three, 4,000 people just on their side. I mean, they're a small town, but we were on TV for that. We won back-to-back -back state titles. I came in with bases loaded in our second one to give up one run, which we had, and we were only up two to one. We went, I went on to close that game out. I mean, I played with people. Or my, high, my travel ball 18U team was number one in the country for baseball, for – four years so we had scouts and people coming to watch so there was always somebody watching so I kind of just took that experiences and just knew that if I just was me and didn't think about what was going on and just was out there to bowl I wouldn't really be that nervous were you mainly a pitcher I was a catcher mainly oh okay but but I uh, pitched, played third and first, depending on what we needed to do. Right. How hard did you throw? Uh, before I tore my arm, I was hitting 88, 89. That's a lot in high school. That's moving it. Not surprised. You do it pretty good underhand, too. I guess, you know, you could have a career there. So Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I do think uh, playing in, in uh, other athletic environments does translate, you know, fairly well to uh, – to some of those pressure moments. And, and obviously you look more calm. We spoke for just a moment after your first round match. And you said uh, you, you were bowing somebody else that was bowling on their first show. And uh, so you felt like if you kept it around 200, I mean, you were setting the, the moon and, and sky as the, as the target. You were very realistic about both of you being a little bit nervous for shows and some yeah. things. And uh just keeping it in play and that, that you'd have a chance at the end. And you certainly weren't afraid of having the ball in your hand at the end. I thought mm -hmm. that was a, a pretty mature way to look at it and, and a, a pretty calm way. Was that your own take or was that some input from, uh, from your dad? Uh, that was pretty much my own take. I didn't really mm -hmm. talk to dad before the first show. I mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to do my own thing, experience it for myself. And or at all, or, you know, do you just, yeah, I just, <laughs> I, just, I mean, <laughs> He Everybody's been trying to tie you guys together a lot, and that hey, your you know your dad had a lot of influence. I'm not getting the feeling that maybe he had all that much influence on on what's going on. Not on the show, no. I mean, we're so completely opposite spectrum people that what works for him probably wasn't going to work for me. I mean, I the only thing I really took from him was that not to try to watch them bowl every shot, just to think about what I want to do. I mean, that was the biggest thing that I took from him. But, like, what he goes through when he was on TV, when I went through was 
completely different be- just because of our personalities. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I'll go, oh, go on, Chris. No, no I, was, I was pretty impressed with, yes, you do throw it hard and your dad throws it hard and everybody wants to tie that part together. But uh, you post up every shot. You come up, you end up on your toes a little bit. I, I don't know, does that change? I, I haven't bowled next to you very much this year. So uh, I don't know if that changes based on how hard you're throwing it or not. Uh, your dad, your dad threw a little bit more of his whole body at it. He had, uh, he, he generally had five steps and then the one after he threw it. Uh, yeah. but, uh, you, you seem to post up everything and the moment didn't seem to get too big for you. Uh, a lot of pretty good on balance online shots. Yeah. I mean, I think that also has to do with how much more I try to get into my legs and my, my dad uses his whole body more than I do. Cause he, that's just how he grew up bowling. Mm-hmm. because of what you guys bowled with back in the day, you had to try to make the balls hook. I grew up in the era of the bowling balls are going to hook. So I just try to get into my legs more and try to stay down through it. I mean, I don't do a great, great job of staying down through it all the time, but I mean, I try my best to. And it's Not just... to say <laughs> preach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I just, really try to get into my legs and I mean I don't like to slide that much so like if I slide too much I put a rubber sole on and plant so it forces me into my legs more okay okay yeah I mean I I'll be honest Kevin I don't think I've ever seen anything like you I I'll be honest like <laughs> I mean you're some I mean people talk about Simon being crazy you, you you're, you're straight fucking nuts I mean, like <laughs> we, we we on that sharp thing and the throwing it hard and straight from the right didn't work. So your next choice was to bowl two handed. I mean, like you out your fucking mind. <laughs> hey, it worked a little bit. Let's just be brutally honest here. Are you nuts? I've been doing oh, this show with Sue for three years and I just every once in a while you just kind of go, oh, Oh, here we're going. Here we go. I don't know where we're going now. All right. I mean, a little like, bit. I mean, like, it's like a circus at times. Like, what goes through your mind that you think, you know what? I mean, I'm one of the best bowlers in the field. Fuck it. Let's just bowl two-handed. Like, what, what goes through your mind at that point? Um, If I feel like I have nothing, like, to strike with, I'm going to try it. Okay. If I have nothing that I think I can strike with, I'm going to go to that because it changes my tilt and it makes me throw it slower. Yeah, I, I heard this theory in Wichita when you pulled it out. Like, so hey, you saw it work. We're, we're balling together in Wichita. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the first game. Let, let's, <laughs> let's be fair. <laughs> so, the, with Kevin's whatever. And the next minute, he's not bowling very well. I look up and he's got like an eight bagger. And I haven't really been watching because, you know, he isn't bowling that well. The next minute, I watch him throw it two-handed. And I turn around, and I I can't remember who was on the pair with me. And I go, what's going on? And they go, oh, haven't you seen? He's done that the whole game. And I go, he's what? (laughs) So so I ask him, I go, why are you bowling two-handed, right? And he goes, could throw it slow. (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. You so as much as you want to say you don't have a bit of Eugene in you, oh boy, you do. Yeah. Oh, you do. The, the McCune gene isn't it, it's in there. Don't you worry about it. Whether it's your grandfather f- making like blowing up hotel rooms with chemicals, or whether it's Eugene like standing in the front of the ball return on fresh, or if it's you just like Screw it. Let's just bowl two-handed. I can't throw it slow. 48 yeah. feet. Yeah, 22 miles seems about right. <laughs> exactly. You're you, all you're all you making the stuff I teach in clinics completely worthless all in one show. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it it it's it, it it's wild, like just wild the things you could do. So yeah. when you when you bowl two-handed, you bowl two-handed with your thumb in it. Um obviously yes. because you'd need other balls. Have you but, actually uh, tried bowling two-handed like with a dedicated two-handed ball? 
Um, I did. I actually drilled a ball at the World Series for Scorpion after I went even, even minus 30 or whatever I went on Scorpion. I drilled a ball at the World Series and I went 70 over, bowling two handed the last block with one ball. I drilled a Rattler. And I went 70 over, bowling two handed without the thumb in. I guess I tried the wrong things. Well, I tried a lot of things, but I didn't try that. So that's to be definitely fair, be I went two handed. I wasn't going 70 over. <laughs> no. But yeah, that's going to be a definite prominent thing over the summer here that I'm going to be learning. To oh, keep in the yeah, bag. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, didn't just win a major ball in one handed. Yeah, screw it. Let's 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 figure out this two handed thing as well. You never know when I might need it. Oh, well, it does shorten your backswing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I can continue with this for another half hour, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> We said more nuts things on here ourselves. So. Uh, somebody says the crazy thing is that if Butters won the fifth ball with Super Slam would have been Sand Tube. That's incorrect. It it would have been. Uh, what would have been you? Yeah, it would have been me. It, it would. It was. It like Bill. If you'd have both lost, Bill would have been in. Yeah. Right. Um, from Seedin. Um, I. I. The the thing that. I mean, I understand that that Super Slime is being jammed in there to, for a TV show. Uh, I get it. Um, I understand that they've got two shows out of it. Okay, cool, whatever. I just can't get my head around the fact that somebody who came fourth in a major could end up being the number one seed to bowl for 100,000. Yeah. Like, like, Butters has to be a lock for the fifth seed. That's just the way it is. Like, there isn't. To me, there's no getting around that. He didn't even really qualify. But whatever. Moving along. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, breaking news. I don't think Mikey bowled any extra games this season. He certainly didn't win a major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's probably a few guys looking into it if we're going to keep bowling on, on some of the same things. Uh, I imagine Brad Miller's probably looking at uh, maybe some two-handed bowling. I don't but the know. thing is, is like, <laughs> is Mikey hasn't really had much success at all on the PBA tour. No. And if and he's a pretty athletic dude. Mm -hmm. And if he feels like he can get the two-handed working, good, good luck to him. I mean, just look at the PBA tour. Like, I think I'm 19th and I'm about the seventh one-hander. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I, I like where you're coming from. I think if it's a, a fairly smooth transition into uh, into a way to, to add tools into your game. And, uh, you know, the, like I said, the random crossing, we were never, I don't think I can recall being anywhere near you pretty much all season. Only tournament we were near each other was Kokomo. Yeah, and I was trying to forget that one. So thanks for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bowled with or next to Kevin like a reasonable, like three or four times, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a seamless way to get into it, and and it's a big, you know, uh, a little bit of a misnomer how much things change when you go to two handed. It really doesn't, other than your your off hand yeah. stays on the ball, which which turns you away from it a little bit, but. Uh, uh, you know, some of the guys like Kyle, if you didn't know, he would just look like a, a one-hander that has a really short backswing because yeah. none of his hips or shoulders turn away from it at all. So, um, so might as well ask you as you're bowling. Um, is it three-game total pin on Saturday qualifier? Um, so what we've heard is that it is <laughs> we're all bowling one game individually. And oh, we're yeah. Randomly – Pick out of pick out of a hat to see who goes first and second and so on, and uh, that's how we'll get our seating for set for uh, Sunday. Yeah, I heard, I heard I actually did hear this. I actually like I don't know how that's going to feel very long because like you and EJ are going to take about ten minutes between you to bowl the game. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. I don't think if we didn't have commercial breaks during my and EJ's match, I think we would have been done and over with in about. 15, 20 minutes. Well, and Butters <laughs> doesn't take any time either. Yeah. Yeah. Belmo is definitely going to look like the slow hose. 
<laughs> yeah. And, and it's yeah, not Charlie, me. I don't know if you know Charlie because he's old enough to yeah. be your grandfather, but uh, uh, in 81, Eugene cleared out the bar when guys left to watch him off the gutter cap. Uh, Charlie had only heard about those to chase pins. So uh, that's the closest he'd ever been to the gutter cap. So <laughs> he said he only had two six man lanes were impossible. Yeah, we, I've seen Eugene stand on the other side of the bar return. And, uh, you know, he walks a little right at it, but he can get it down there a little bit before before there was a lot of guys doing it. It's always my favorite when the guy bowls on the wrong lane and then move, then like fades back about 20, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, he was still sliding left of the cap, though. He wasn't one of the guys that started over there and then slid like 48. The the video that Rash showed, oh, is this what guys like? And they showed him and he's standing over there. And then he slides. Uh, it was a Japanese guy, maybe. Yeah. And he slid like 46. I'm like, I was deeper than that. Thelma can stand on 20 and slide there. Yeah. Thelma's <laughs> <laughs> still got dots left of him and he's, not, he's getting up to that. Uh, so um, <laughs> let, let, let's just talk about your year a little bit, just in general. Um, who do you travel around with? Um, I was rooming with Stubler when Stubler made it out. Oh, uh, oh, Anthony. Uh, and then, <laughs> did, did you know I, that reference? What we're talking about? I, you went in and out, so I was just kind of not. Oh, sorry. So no, Nate Stubler um, has been referred to as the modern day Earl Anthony. Oh, nice. I think it's because they're both left-handed. That's where the comparison stopped. (laughs) I love Stoops. But, uh, (laughs) but yeah, I mean. That was Flanagan's Flanagan's call there, right? Mm. Yeah. So you you said you room with Stuber a little bit. Who else? Uh, And then I just mainly hung out with, like, Brandon, my doubles partner, Brandon Runk, and Nyer and a couple of them. I and you just, hung out with some weird ass people, all lefties. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't really talk to that many people. I just kind of do my own thing. Yeah, I get it. But when you did chose to talk to people, you picked three lefties. Well, <laughs> my my doubles partner, you know, I gotta gotta stay good with him. I need him to carry me one of these years. Let's consider where he grew up, Stu. You know. Yeah, look at my dad. He ruined with Schaefer for like 28 years. Can you imagine the positivity that came out of the room between your dad and Schaefer? I still hear about it when they're together. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're absolutely the greatest. Like, those two were Brad and Kyle before Brad and Kyle existed. They would have had the greatest YouTube channel of all time. It would have been great, too. They said finally would have had an outlet for all of the sarcasm and the... uh, (laughs) <laughs> and, and and the thing is, is half their viewership would just would just quit bowling. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't stop watching them. They'd just quit bowling. <laughs> They'd be like, man, if you get that miserable while bowling, fuck it, I'm done. As good as those guys are, and that's where it gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Shaver makes the TV show like 70 times and he's still like so livid with everything. <laughs> there was never I used to say it all the time after you know Schaefer grinded for like 15 years and then all of a sudden he just he, he made shows like they were free. And he's so ingrained in that having to be kind of unhappy and keep working at it and whatever that he didn't have anything really to complain about anymore. Because he was on the show every week. It's, nobody was more uncomfortable without having a target. <laughs> They're like, yeah, well, qualified second again. <sighs> <laughs> it's okay. Just being around UG gave him enough, him enough to moan about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get by this part now. Forever. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a very good, very good thing. Uh, I I don't know the the hundred and ten k you ended up winning for winning that tournament's pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. I can go golf as much as I want for a little while now. Yeah, the the, <laughs> the, the things that twenty four year olds think. If I if I'd have won, Tina had already been designing the pool. You're talking about being able to play <laughs> golf as often as you want. 
<laughs> if I'd have won the players, I'd have probably lost money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would have. Uh, Kyle had a great year considering he came back from a bad injury. He and Tackett carrying carrying the torch. I, I'd say uh, this man did a pretty good job as well. Probably better than uh, better than that one. Uh, here's a here's a take. Kevin throwing as fast as he can can literally just fire shots of the U.S. Open. That's a surefire way to make the cut. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're quite. Yeah. We're not yeah. quite to that. No, just on the. I only did it on the 37 flat. The thing, the thing is, is right, is it's really difficult to decide that you're going to just hammer it at the head pin without some failure to start with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by the time because you're behind, you, then that you always strategy think, doesn't work. Oh, this, oh, I'll figure it out. And then once you bowl the 130, you're like, why didn't I just like <laughs> it was like it was like you know when we did the the one where everybody used the plastic balls like two years ago? Oh yeah, yeah. And like Dom was coming up for the last squad, and I'm like, bro, just check your ego, throw the plastic. And Dom was like, nah, bro, I'm not throwing plastic. And about three games in, he was like, damn, should have thrown the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I go, Dom, take it from me. I bowl next to Jake Peters, and he. Absolutely ripped me a new one. They are impossible. And Dom just looks at you and you can see him going, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot better than you. Yeah, impossible for you, maybe. I got this. And then three <laughs> games in, he's like, ah, maybe not as much better than you as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who knows me and Dom, being able to tell each other that actually you were right, quite painful. Yeah, yeah, a lot of nonverbal communication in those admissions. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to go from one hundred to two hundred on a women's key success, surely Walter Ray would still be at it. Makes you think there's a little more to it than that. Well, the thing is, is Walter Ray's two handed isn't quite the same as Kevin's two handed. Yeah, creating ball speed's a big deal, and. <clears throat> And yeah, and it, it is way overstated that hey, if you're just two-handed, the game's way easier. You you do still have to have a level of ability to. Is it though? Yeah, yeah. Is it overstated though, Chris? Is it though? If it was that easy, would you and I still be throwing it one-handed? <laughs> yeah, I'm fairly stubborn. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just saying to you, but I mean, is it though? Is is it is it really? If I could throw it relatively the, the same accuracy, which is a, a much lower bar than it used to be, uh, two handed as I do one handed, yeah, I would throw it two handed because I my rev rate would be higher, but I would have more power. But yeah, so you wouldn't grab it as much either. Well, at least not with my thumb. That's what I'm saying. No judging, just saying. No, I, I would right. probably still elbow it just as much, I imagine, but but not. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Alan Chan, a uh, longtime Brunswick guy, um, passed away this week. That I did not bad. know that. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, he was a super uh, good dude. Yeah. Yeah, we spent some time together traveling around the world. I didn't yeah. get to enjoy my own celebration at the Japan Cup the one year because I had to go to Australia like that night. <laughs> celebrating on the plane isn't as much fun people people are trying no, to and Alan's a great guy but it's not necessarily you know i didn't i didn't really want to celebrate on the plane with alan at, at uh, two in the morning on a flight that was going to last like another eight or nine hours <laughs> so <laughs> uh kyle ross simo i'm gonna throw it hard to the pocket kevin McCune, hold my beer <laughs> <laughs> This is probably going to be funny. From the uh, TPK Kevin. kids? Yeah. Uh, saw Eugene have a horrible week. Last game, he was so pissed, he decided to just throw it hard and loft it to the arrows, dead straight, the head pin. Kirk wanted to find him, but he had the front seven. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we um that that reminds me of one time we went we went to the Kaggle Trading Center, right? And I don't know if you bowled at Kaggle, Kevin, but like I've I've walked in there. But the machines are like uh, because they can tilt the lanes for like yeah. research or whatever, the machines are like super tight, like way tighter than any of the other machines. Like there's way more tension. So like the kickbacks, like Danielle McCune can throw messengers like you. Like it's it, it it it's like it's like Disney World of messengers. It's a joke, <laughs> right? So when we went there the first time, Belmo and Oscu legitimately tried to leave the two ten for forty <clears throat> minutes, and they kept leaving it, and the pin kept bouncing up on the deck and knocking one of them over, like every time. It was ridiculous, right? So anyway, Oscu says, "Well, the pins fly around here." So Oscu starts throwing heaters at the head pin. And I mean, like, it sounds like a bomb is going off. Like, every time he hits the pocket, it's like, bang! And then pins are just falling from the sky, right? So he's like, one strike, two strikes, three strikes. And they come down, they're like, can you stop? Like, the people in the center, they're like, can you stop? And Oscu's like, when I miss. And they're like, what do you mean? He goes, when I when one of them stands up, I'll stop. Until then, I'm going to continue. And they're like, you're going to put a hole in the back of the machine. Because he's like literally just throwing as hard as he can at the head pin. He ended up with 13 strikes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> like on the practice day, before yeah. like he finally one finally stood. And we were laughing about it as to whether it was actually a legitimately good idea or whether Oscar's body would rip in half before he finished an eight game block. But it was just like, every time he made contact with the head pin, the lighter he hit the head pin, the better. Cause the head pin was just going back and forth. Like it was on his, like literally like someone was just moving it. So yeah, that place, you and your heaters in that place. Yeah. You, you've had some okay times over there, haven't you, Chris? Like, you've uh, thrown it. Yeah, yeah, I proved that you actually could still flat 10 there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bowled against Wes. He shot two 300s. I managed to shoot uh, 217 with about five 10 pins. And, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Au contraire. You can you can make them as tight as you want. I still, I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that, that that's what's called knowing your audience, Kev. Set up yeah. for that one. <laughs> yeah, you lost that one. Then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, good times, so, good times. Yeah. Um, let, let's chat a little bit about the balls you've used this year. Um, what have you liked out of the range? Uh, what's been the ones you've been using quite a bit? Um, not just last week, but just in general. Yeah. All my go tos on the year have pretty much been the innovator solid. The Black Widow 2.0, the solid one. Yeah, the black uh, one, yeah. Yeah, the black one. Um, a Black Widow Ghost. A Mindset. The Purple Hammer. Uh, a me the Melee Midnight Blue. Okay. It's been one I've, I've thrown a lot. And the Messenger Solid. I've been so like really the main balls. I've literally traveled around with Dom the entire year. And the only one of those balls outside the Purple Hammer that he's used at all was the mindset. And the mindset still had pencil lines on it when he was trying to use it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> like he did. I, I am lying a little bit. He used the black, that black, black widow, the 2.0 a little bit, the world series. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing how many balls you guys have got that like two guys can be relatively successful over the season and like not use even close yeah. to the same balls. Like he did drill that um that innovator solid. That was the one that I was like, oh my god, is that ever gonna stay on the line? That ball's <laughs> really strong. Um yeah. Ralph, thanks for the super chat. He said, what ball would you recommend under a shiny reality building a bag for the LBC? Um, from what I've seen over there, I like the absolute in that building a lot. Um, I think that the surface, it, having something that's a little bit uh, cleaner underneath it, uh, another asymmetrical ball as well. I think it's a really good complement to the reality. Um, 
So that would be my recommendation. Um, I'm right around the same sort of numbers as you as well. 17 miles an hour, 400 RPMs. Um, so yeah, I, I like the absolute a lot over there. Any thoughts, Chris? No, I don't have any. No, uh, in general, uh, reality has been very good. Uh, gosh, some of the, the lighter balls that uh, that have that have come up a little. The, the revenant's been is showing to be a little stronger than what we first thought it was, cover wise, uh, and that's going to be a fairly easy pattern. So that's something that could be in play there. Um, what else? Uh, Hello. Not, didn't have a ton of success there myself. So, uh, but yeah, I would, I would, the surface hooks a lot. So you're going to want to skew towards cleaner covers, uh, and, or like that, or like a strong balls with, uh, with, with shot, with a little polish on them. Um, yeah. Uh, Larry, um, a long time, uh, <laughs> contributor says, would love to see a doubles team of Kevin and the ginger assassin talk about pins flying. It's funny. You should say that we were actually talking about a trios team with Cooley. <laughs> there would be some wood moving around there. Uh, Kevin, the ginger assassin, and Dexter. That's a that'd be uh, that'd be okay. interesting. Yeah. Hey guys, congrats, Kevin. Can you tell your viewers about the August regional swing in Ohio and Virginia, eighth uh, to twentieth, over twenty six thousand in first place prizes? Well, that's very cool. Um, yeah, so. it's basically the old summer swing that we had, uh, and it's. They, they pay about the same as they did then. <laughs> so there's a co there's cold water and um, Minster, Minster, which is Davidson's uh, place right. of Davidson on the road. And then is that the center in Chesapeake? Then yeah. And so it's just the three, or is there another one? There's a fourth one. There's okay. a fourth one. They all backed them up back to back to back. So it's a very cool setup if it it works out in the right place. We're on the senior tour, so that pro that's not going to work out for uh, for me. But uh, yeah, if you're in the area, certainly, and it's you know, Hampton race to get to Hampton. That's there what it is. There you go. Thank uh, you. Well, yeah, it's the thanks for the solid, chat. and they're obviously great places with uh, great hosts. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, just shout out to anybody who's going to the uh, the LBC. Start looking into hotels. I had a uh, scary, upsetting time this morning once I booked flights for my mom and dad and my and my wife and Brady and we were all set and had flights booked, everything sorted. Tried to uh, tried to book hotels and they were like three fifty a night, so a little rough. <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" Yeah, that's I was like, "I've spent a lot of time on the very last night. weekend, right?" Yeah, yeah, that that was for the last weekend, but I had a look at a couple of other weekends because it's only on the weekend, and it seems like there's quite a lot of activities in that area um, on the weekend. So, um, just a shout, just a heads up, you might want to uh, might want to check that out. Um, well, that's good. Glad we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Century Lanes is wood. Yeah, I remember everybody talking about that place last year. Um, so, interesting combination. Um, yeah. So, Kevin, what's next after the Super Slam? You got anything planned for the summer? You're just going to hit the regional um, tour? What, what's the... What's the uh, after the Super Slam, my girlfriend's bowling a regional and. uh the women, one of the women's regionals, and then I go to. I'm. I think I'm doing a clinic with Bone out in PA for a youth event. Uh, and then after that, I go to nationals the following week, or two weeks after that, and then just regionals after that. Okay. All right. Yeah, we we've got kind of the same deal going on um, down here. We have a lot of extra tournaments though um, that often pay better than the regionals. So it's uh, kind of just um, kind of just piecing that all together. Um, just a heads up for you, 
you've now got 500 miles to worry about, not 100 miles for regionals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think it might be 250 actually. I think it's down. That's down a little bit from where oh, we do, we change now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But uh, yeah, but yeah, you, you have to check in a little more often about bowling some uh, some local tournaments versus versus the yeah. regionals. So. Yeah, because there's the one Memorial Day classic that uh, Mike Eaton runs. Yeah. Uh, up at Spectrum that pays mm -hmm. ten thousand over Memorial Day weekend. If anybody's in the area for that, it's always a good tournament. So there you go. Kevin giving shout outs to tournaments. Look at him trying to help out the little guy. Now he's not the little guy. Well, you got enough money in your pocket, you don't mind. Well, just finding some fish to, to feed, you know, feed his feed his entry fee. So uh, uh, Jack and uh, Tom says, Kevin, you inspired me to throw it harder and straighter on Cheetah. Uh, had a more consistent release up the back. Well, that's good. At 58 yeah. after eight games of this, I'm wiped. <laughs> uh, lol. See you in Morgantown, Chris. Yeah. West Virginia this year. Right after yeah, the Lucy. Virginia. That's, um, is that, is that, is, is that B-Rob town? I, I mean, he's in West Virginia. I have no idea which part. Yeah. So I think he might be in that area. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, good old B-Rob face the brand, baby face the brand. <laughs> there you go. Dombrowski says yes. Well, with that, uh, Kevin, thanks for giving us part of your morning. Uh, congratulations on adding to the uh, the the lore of the family uh, tree and and all the accomplishments that uh, that that have happened. Uh, uh, pretty cool, I think. What they said, your first third generation. Yeah, we yeah. the first three generation. Very awesome. That's uh, that's that's a very cool thing. Uh, so. <laughs> oh we got a few super chats coming in as per normal everybody likes everybody likes extending the show out a little bit so um a lot of these are going to be ball questions um have a duo coming okay cool every ball i have drilled uh strong should i keep a strong layout and would you recommend keeping this in box finish or changing it um from what i've seen so far I would recommend drilling the duo a little stronger because the cover is very strong. So if you end up uh, drilling it weaker, I think that you're going to have the core and the cover having an argument with each other for being able to use it just a lot of the time. Um, guys who tried to use that ball to be sort of like a go long and come off it, it wasn't very good to get that sort of shape. I felt like it's much better... Um, to use it as like a bit more of a control uh, ball, a little further right is what I've seen from it. Um, we haven't had that much play with it because it's only really been out a couple of weeks uh, for us. But that's kind of what I saw out of it, Chris. I thought that the people who got left, I thought that it stood up a little bit too hard uh, to watch it consistently come around the corner and it maybe using it a little... Uh, stronger layouts and as a slightly bigger ball might have been a better option. Yeah, I think it's it has medium numbers, but it is a fairly strong cover. So when they hook, it's not going to go. It, it's not. Uh, I think you have to go one one way or the other with it. I have a lower, weaker one to really kind of help push it through and be a little smoother. Uh, the other way is to go ahead and just is help it kind of own what it is, and then and then at that point you could you could break the cover if you wanted to to help it just be a stronger, stronger ball overall. So, yeah. But remember, uh, for the people at home, it's got the same cover as the exotic gem. Yeah. So that's a pretty strong responsive cover. So, yeah. Um, all right. The craziest thing Kevin showed me was his multiple different fits at the players baffling. <laughs> how does this, Kevin, how does this affect your feel? What feel? Talk to me about this. You've upset me enough already, so let's talk to me about this. Yeah, I, I use different spans depending on what I want to see the balls do. How different? Uh, like the purple hammer that I was using on TV was cut to so cut to cut, like how the truck drills them mm -hmm. was four and a half by four and a half. 
And then the innovator solid that I was using on the left lane was four and seven by four and three eighths. So like an eighth of an line. inch. Yeah. Five and I have different, I have different finger, a little bit of fingers. Yeah. I have different finger lengths, different finger pitches. I use oval and semi grips and some stuff, depending on how I want the balls to shape. You have plenty of your dad in you. Yeah. You, uh, you are nuts. You got some I'm mad scientists in you. I like it. So, uh, well, maybe more your grandfather of, of cutting, you know, the cutting edge type thing. Uh, you know. All right. Just, just, just for reference, four and a half is massive for a cut to cut as well. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That, that's, that's about a half big. inch longer than mine. Yeah. Not quite, mm -hmm. but yeah, close. And it's so, not like yeah. we've got particularly small. I, I don't have NFL quarterback hands, but I don't have like tiny hands either. Four and a half for a cut to cut is pretty big. Like yeah, it's, it's obviously I get not you up almost in the five range. It's not yeah. it it's With not all ten to mod, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I have a little bit of my, my dad in me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Couple of pumps in a square, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> on that note uh, all right uh, <laughs> get your plug get your plug ready here we go <laughs> this is awesome i love it like Everything Kevin does, every pro shop operator in America is like, Ugh. no. <laughs> yeah. I, and another thing that I do do like my dad is I was still in 60 on the right lane and 15 on the left. <laughs> so, yeah, I got more craziness. Uh... Chris, get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> please uh Stu, you just love our conversations all the time oh yeah they're just awesome like <laughs> kevin you're using too much surface it only has 2000 i don't care what surface it has that's too much surface do you think kevin you've been straight through the nose four times in a row this game yeah i think so okay maybe i'll try this shiny one okay seven bagger Huh. Weird. Hey, I owed you one. I know. That was just funny. This is great. This picture was oh. awesome. Were you standing on a chair? Because there's no oh. way your dad could pick you up now. Right? Yeah. Dino, Dino made me stand on a chair and recreate the photo. Was that when your dad won his first? Yeah. 2002. Yeah. My week! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you grew in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh, it's so fun watching Eugene. He's so proud of you. <laughs> and he's he has just as much energy when you're bowling as almost as much as when he's bowling. So like when people start like screaming, like when they when when they're bowling, that's Eugene. Loves it. Loves it. And then when you're at the back, he's like, you, you, you threw one at the World Series. And all you hear from the back is, come the fuck on. <laughs> <laughs> As it doesn't strike. <laughs> People are like turning around going, who said that? What? <laughs> oh, like, I, I think that's when I went to the one pair and I went 7-10, strike, 7-10, strike, 9-pin. I think on the 9-pin, he went... He yeah, he, it was like he was bowling. <laughs> He'd had enough. <laughs> and and I can relate to that. Watching watching uh you know, whether it was Linda, Ryan, Troy, any of it, it just uh you start you start bleeding it a little bit, almost <laughs> sometimes more than for yourself. It's uh it's wild. So well, it is my boy's uh sixteenth or sixteenth, twenty-first birthday, because I'm old. And uh so we're probably going to try and get at least one of them drunk tonight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not Ryan. 
it's going to be trickier to get that to happen. We had Spike his rank to have it, but uh, uh, so last question. Go ahead, Stu. Fire in. So, have you tried a fourteen yet, Kev? I have. I drilled one just for just to see. I actually shot seven eighty at league with it, and I actually threw it slower. <laughs> <laughs> it actually slowed my ball speed down because I couldn't feel it. <laughs> All right. Well. We'll, we'll have a poll question. How many That's are going to throw tonight? Going to be. One, two, plus Linda. Which one? How many? Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to be most drunk tonight? Troy, Ryan, Linda. Ding, 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 ding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's the only one in your house who actually really likes alcohol, though. There's that. Well... <laughs> We might have one more that hasn't admitted it yet, but yeah. <laughs> Troy likes drinking. Now. Now that he's actually him. legal, yeah. we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for showing out. Um, we will be back on Thursday. Um, we will try and do something topical, um, probably something technical. Um, we will figure it out, and I will get back to you. Um, I'm trying to gather more information for nationals so I don't just make a um, random no info. Uh, yeah. Just we go here non- in a couple of weeks. We had a practice session at the ITRC yesterday on uh, sort of ish the patterns, I guess, older patterns that. So we'll come sharing some of that information too. And, uh, Thanks, Kevin. Congratulations on being the newest major champion and uh, quite a run through multiple TV shows. I'm sure Brunswick will pay you incentives for all three of those shows. Uh, Four four shows, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. When you win 100, you're not so worried about the other. um... (laughs) No, what I'm saying is the incentive on 100 is usually better than the incentive on like 8 or 10. Could be. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Until next time, guys. Uh, Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back out here Thursday. Until next time, please support the sponsor. Support us. Storm, Rotogrip, Manor Global, Cool Wick, Bowler Smart, Fire Lake Bowling Center, Lightning Strikes, and Platinum Four. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. See you later. Thanks, Kev. Yep. Yep.